Hey guys, good morning. It is 15 degrees here in central Indiana today. It is freezing for me, but I am going to go and get a few things here at Meyer, but I'm also going to get my ginger that I'm going to be spreading indoors. So I just want to show you really quick how that looks like so that if you want to start ginger at home, you can see how easy it is. Last year, I had a lot of success growing ginger at home from the ginger that I purchased at my local grocery store. So, so I decided to repeat the same process this year. But if you wanna purchase seed that has been designed specifically for seed ginger, for growing ginger at home, you can find a couple of resources online. I believe that Johnny's is one of them. I'm not sure about Baker Creeks, but there are a lot of places where you can find ginger specifically for growing. Like I said, last year I had great results with the ginger that I purchased at my local store. So I am doing the same thing this year. And one of the things, of course, that you have to look for when you are buying ginger at your local store for growing more ginger is you wanna make sure that the pieces are nice and firm. They don't feel saggy, that they don't feel like, that they don't feel like they are decaying in any way. You wanna make sure that the skin is nice and soft, nice and firm. If it's really, really wrinkly, more than likely that ginger is already kind of old. So you wanna make sure that you start with pieces that are healthy looking. This ginger right here, I think is like very good looking, but these are the pieces that I'm going to use. And from growing ginger last year and seeing how much it multiply from one tiny little piece, this will be the amount that I will grow for my whole family. This right here will give me tons and tons of ginger at the end of the season. But I also found out that my mom likes to make teas. So I am going to get a couple more pieces that I am going to distribute. I'm going to try to sprout so that I can give her and then I'm going to keep a few for myself as well so that hopefully I can have a bunch of ginger at the end of the season. And depending on the ginger that you are buying, some of the pieces that you might find have already the eyes showing very clearly. If you're not sure about what I'm talking about, here's a quick graphic to show you what the eyes look like. There are little bumps on the skin, on the pieces that is showing that the ginger wants to sprout. That's basically where the sprouts, where the green leaves, where the growth is going to come from when we try to sprout these pieces at home. The pieces that I have right here have been in water, have been soaking for the last three hours getting close to four hours right now. I know that a lot of people that grow ginger at home don't really soak their pieces. I like to do this, I don't think that it hurts. So they have been there for four hours. If you wanna skip this step, that's up to you. But again, I did this last year, the same thing, and it works for me. One of my best performance uh, reel that I did last year on Instagram was about was about growing ginger at home. And it reached a couple of million people, and from that reel, I had plenty, plenty of questions of people asking what do you use, what kind of ginger, what type of soil, what containers, how long did it take, all of that. And I probably spent a lot of time answering all those questions from people that wanted to do this at home after seeing the results that I have. So I decided to make a PDF showing you step-by-step -step how I did that last year, the results that I got, how long it took me, what I use, all of that stuff. And while I'm going to take you this year through the process of growing the ginger, but if you wanna check it out, if you wanna see the process, if you wanna look at the pretty pictures that I got, you can just download the PDF really quick. I will add the description under this video's description, so check below. I'll put it up on the comments as well, so find it. It's an automatic thing. You basically put your email and the form will be emailed to you instantly. So if you wanna have that PDF, just grab it, it's free. And at the end of the season, I hope that you can update me on how well your ginger did. The things that I'm going to be using are very simple. I'm going to use a tray with my favorite potting mix. If you wanna start seed starting mix, that's up to you. Just use whatever medium you feel comfortable using. I am going to go with potting mix because I am not using seed starting mix anymore. It's just a personal preference. And I am going to use a bottom tray for bottom water. This green tray that I have right here with the potting mix has holes already. It's one of those mesh trays. So this one is just going to absorb the water really quickly from the bottom. And like I said, the ginger has been soaking for four hours. What I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be breaking this ginger apart. I am going to try to keep some of the ice and some of the pieces together. For example, this guy is kind of big. I'm just going to break it in two. I 
and this guy right here, I'm also going to break in two. This, ha this guy has at least two or three eyes right there, and this guy has a few eyes there as well. And what I can do is that I can break this guy as well. I know this is a good eye right here. Perfect. And I am trying to gently sort of bury the pieces into the potting mix. We're just trying to sprout the pieces. We're not keeping these pieces here for a long time. This guy is gonna be by itself. And from my experience last year, keeping these pieces really close together in proximity when they're sprouting is not the best idea because these pieces are going to grow roots, are going to grow, are going to grow tons of roots. And once all of those roots start growing very close together, it's going to be really hard to separate. And this is it, this is the perfect amount of ginger for this tray. But before we continue, are you enjoying the videos that I have been posting lately? Are they helping you in any way? If you are, will you do me a favor and maybe share one of my videos with one of your friends, somebody that you started growing things at home? I will really, really appreciate it. And I am just going to grab a little bit of potting mix and I don't necessarily need to cover the entire pieces of ginger, but I do want to make sure that the ginger has, that the ginger is touching all of the potting mix with the moisture and the warm. The pieces are going to start to sprout. So that's what we're going for. And because I don't really want to mess up any of the work that I have, on this tray. I am just very carefully going to bat on water. Ginger is one of those things that takes forever to grow, to fully mature before you can harvest. It can take from eight to 10 months. For my zone here in central Indiana, I get only about six months during the whole year for having a frost-free growing season. So this ginger will need a little bit more time than that to keep on maturing, to keep on growing. That's why I decide to start ginger two to three months before I can take it outside. So by the time that I have it outside, it's already going, the plants, the seedlings are already going, and it can fully mature outside. Ginger does not handle frost very well. It will actually kill the plant if you take it outside when, it's still, when you are still at risk of having a frost. So depending how much time you have outside for growing plants that don't love the frost, you might need to tweak the time that you start your ginger indoors. Again, this ginger is very, very easy, very low maintenance in my opinion. So I decide to start my ginger two to three months before, depending how much time I have to give it. And this ginger is probably going to stay here for close to a month. It's probably going to stay here in this tray for about 30 days or so before it's big enough, before the sprouts are big enough for me to put them up into bigger containers. And in those containers, bigger containers, they are going to keep on growing until I am ready to take them outside, which for me will be about the beginning of May. If you can take your tomatoes outside, you can take your ginger outside. And once you have your ginger growing outside, it can take all the way until the last week of your first frost day, which for me is about the middle end of October. So it takes a long time. It takes a really, really long time for ginger to grow. It's definitely going to be one of the last things that you harvest outside, but I had great results last year with the ginger that I grew in my backyard in one of the containers actually. So I know that growing ginger for my cold zone here in central Indiana is something that I can easily do. I just need to have some preparation beforehand. Again, if you wanna grab the PDF where I show you how to do this from start to finish, just check the information below. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. But ginger, 
It's already going for this year. Fingers crossed. Thank you for being here, you guys, and until the next time.